Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today I'm going to be doing an overview on the new flashlight in the rotation, the Ace Beam Polka Light AA. Let's get started. So if you guys have seen my original video, my first video on the channel as it were, uh, when I get a new everyday carry flashlight, I do a couple of things to it. So number one, the pocket clip usually uh, comes off fairly easy, which is um, counterintuitive for what you would want with a pocket clip. So the first thing I do is I use a zip tie, preferably a high visibility like this orange one, zip tie that will further retain it onto the uh, flashlight. And that means that I can put quite a bit of force on this guy and it's not going anywhere. So it gives me peace of mind and security that this uh, clip will not be popping off. It just holds on to the flashlight through spring retention and depending on the quality and gauge of the metal that they use, that's uh, not necessarily a guarantee. So putting the zip tie on there gives me the improved uh, retention of staying in place in addition to giving me a contrast in that regardless of where I put this guy, the green flashlight on grass or being dropped into the mud or something like that, the high visibility orange zip tie will give me a little bit of contrast and help me find it in low light situations and stuff like that. Another thing I do, you may have heard, uh, I put neodymium magnets on the pocket clip. Now what I've done is I put two of them on here. I use some heat shrink again of a high contrast color. Uh, you could put black on here to make it a little less um, distracting, uh, but I am a function over fashion kind of individual. But with that neodymium magnet, what you can do, it will magnetize itself and it allows me to use it hands-free. Now I can use this on a refrigerator. I can use this on the hood under my car, on my car as a, um, Warning flashlight on a bicycle. Uh, another thing I do is with a Swiss Army knife. This is the uh, Cyber Tool M in the video of my most priced pocket knives. Uh, when I have this in my pocket, oriented uh, probably at like 9, 10 o'clock, what have you, on your waist, I can attach this to the pocket knife, turn it on, and it's essentially pointing directly in front of me. So I have a hands-free means of lighting my way. It's going to be at a waist level. But when paired, when synergized with your tool, I can connect it onto the pliers and I can have it at whatever angle I need it to be in order to point in the direction that I'm trying to work. So you got a little bit of synergy there. You have a uh, hands-free means of using the tool. In addition to if you're trying to collect up uh, screws and nuts and bolts and stuff like that, I can just roll them in that direction and everything will attach to it. I believe I have a video that I'm going to try and roll in here. And the magnet also helps you to magnetize things. So if I had a long screwdriver, I could put the magnet up here. The base would now become magnetized and I can use it to pick up items. So that is a uh, multi-purpose thing. Again, by not relying on glue and using a bandage, which is the heat shrink, this cannot come off versus glue that can fail, that will degrade over time, that needs to be reapplied. This one, it is wrapped into place. So the more you pull it apart, the more it's going to cinch on itself. It, it's not going to be going anywhere. In addition, in addition, in addition, by having it be heat shrink, it's almost a rubber material. So when I use that magnet on something, it takes a decent amount of effort to get it to twist. So one, I'm not scratching the surface on which I'm attaching it to. Second, when I put it in a certain orientation, if I put it like this, it's not going to walk, it's not going to slide, it's not going to reorientate itself 
the rubber is going to act as a friction surface and keep it in place. With this belt clip, uh, you have a clip for a belt and then you have a clip for the rim of a hat. So you can, and I have, clipped it onto the brim of your hat and it will act as a headlamp. But uh, it is a dual orientation belt clip. The third thing that I do is on the inside of the flashlight, in this case I decided to do it on the battery, uh, take my word for it under here, but I went ahead and printed off a label that has my name and my phone number on it, which will make it more likely to be returned to me when uh, someone finds it because I have lost my two primary flashlights. I blame the kids, they move everything all the time. Every day I lose ground in this house. Uh, but I believe I also have on the inside of this guy, allow me to look. <laughs> yes, so on the inside is a white label and that has my name and phone number on it. So anytime the battery gets replaced, it should, uh, hopefully have someone return it back to you since you uh, put your name and phone number on there. So there's one other mod that I've done with this and uh, I came across some a rubber tube that fits quite nicely over the uh, tail of this guy. Uh, you do have a rather proud button that takes quite a bit of effort in order to get it to activate, but I went ahead and included this over it. Why? Well, it's a couple fold. Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm sold on this idea, but I will make it known for those of you who, um, for some reason, have decided to click on this video. What I've done is I've cut it to about the same height as the button, and this will prevent... That is the cuckoo clock. Everyone should have one. That will prevent the button from accidentally getting pressed, and it stores it in a place where it is not in the way of the clip and it is not in the way of the beam. But... Should the situation call for it, when I turn on the beam, I can go ahead and what I call lantern the beam. So even if it's completely occluded, if I'm using it on a surface, I have essentially a night light, a reading light, something like that. It is acting as a lantern versus being set completely flat on a surface, right? So you're just barely going to put it over the rim there. Works pretty well. It also will scatter your beam. So I don't know how well we can see, especially when it doesn't focus, but we have a little bit of an aura here, keeping it at the same height. You can see the beam now covers the entire work area. So this gives me a little bit of a dimage. Um, it kind of sort of focuses the beam a little bit, gives me a little bit of uh, adaptive control there. But the biggest thing is it gives me a lantern for when I'm walking in the park. Uh, on the way to the park, we have a 35 mile per hour road that um, people don't do 35 on. So by having the ability to turn this into a lantern, I am more likely to be seen by vehicles as we're walking along. In addition to in the park, uh, being it's just now past daylight savings time, um, we have darkness when I usually walk. So being able to turn this into not only a flashlight, but a lantern to me is a benefit. Another, another benefit to having the neodymium magnet secured onto the pocket clip of the flashlight is with my cell phone case, I went ahead and put in one of those steel plates. Uh, this is for use in the car. You just uh, bring this close to the magnetic holder on your dashboard and it will hold your phone for you. Uh, some phones, if the back is made of metal, this will work. Otherwise, you'll need to put in one of these plates. But the benefit is I can go ahead and attach this magnet onto the cell phone case. And uh, of course, I'm recording on the phone, so um, it will hold the phone. But by putting it upright like this, I now have a tripod, essentially, where I can take landscape pictures and videos hands-free. Additionally, 
if we go ahead and set it up this way, I now have the ability to take selfie pictures hands-free. So I essentially have a selfie stick, assuming I have something level that I can set this on. And finally, going back to landscape, if I can angle it, and it will depend on where you've placed the steel plate and all, I can give this enough of an angle where I now have a hands-free means of watching YouTube videos and all when my hands are full, when I'm eating at lunch, stuff like that. So I have a monopod, a tripod, a selfie stick, and a hands-free phone holder by having those magnets on the flashlight. Another another benefit to this is the fact that it runs on double A's and it runs on double A's and it runs on double A's and it runs on double A's. So it doesn't run on four double A's clearly, but what it does do is it is rated to run on your standard alkaline double A's, which you can get at any gas station, any Target, Walmart, camping store, anywhere you happen to be. You can also run it off of rechargeable AA batteries. So this one is a nickel metal hydride. They have nickel cadmiums as well. And this guy is rated to run on those types of batteries as well. So if you have rechargeables, you can go ahead and charge them up. As soon as your battery dies while it's on the charger or if you're out and about, you can switch back to your standard alkalines. In addition to those, it will run, and this is not in the manual, but this is just through my testing, it will run on the Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries. They are double A's as well. They are 1.5 volt lithium batteries. They are substantially lighter. They run longer. They work better in the cold. And um, this is something that I've been using for about two and a half weeks now. I have not seen any issues with the flashlight and it will run on these batteries as well. In addition, addition, addition to the fact that it comes with its own Ace Beam 920 milliamp hour 3.7 volt ARC14500 slash AA type C AA battery. Now this is a lithium battery that's at 3.7 volts, which is more than the 1.5 of a standard AA. Uh, let us confirm, 1.5 volts is right there. What this guy allows you to do is you're gonna have substantially brighter uh, output and I believe it will last longer as well than a standard alkaline with the benefit of having a USB charger built in. Now, what I like about this is I run Android phones. They have USB-C uh, charging cables, so I have them in my car. I have them in my um, backpack. I have them at my desk at work, all these things. The benefit of having the USB-C port on the battery itself versus built into the flashlight is one, I can't accidentally charge a non-rechargeable, <laughs> will burst into flame, alkaline battery with the charging port on the outside because I don't recall what cell I have in there. Secondly, you can increase the waterproofness of your flashlight by not having a gaping hole in the chassis that you have to have some piece of rubber or waterproofing or something like that to cover. Third, uh, I can have this connected to any USB cable that I have anywhere that I have it while I can continue using the flashlight with a replaceable uh, alkaline battery or what have you. Uh, so I don't have to be locked out of my flashlight by having it on a charger for two hours waiting for the proprietary battery to recharge. <coughs> oh, lights. So this is something that I consider to be incredibly useful. The fact that it can run on four different types of double A footprints. Now, uh, at some point in time, I'm hoping to see if I can't probably void the warranty, but see if I can't get it to run off of a triple A. 
All I would need to do is uh, shim it and make it electrically conductive, probably by just packing it with uh, aluminum foil, but I will save that fire hazard for another video. So while we're here, we're looking at 50 grams with a Energizer lithium battery. These are going to be a little bit lighter. We're gonna go ahead and roll in a standard Duracell AA battery. And we are looking at about 60 grams. Now, keep in mind that this is with a couple of my mods. I've added a little bit of weight with the zip tie, a little bit of weight with the magnets, and a little bit of weight with the lantern shroud. So it will actually be a little bit lighter. Um, without batteries and with my mods, we're looking at about 40 grams. So call it maybe 35 stock. Uh, kind of counterintuitively, the head is going to be the part that separates from the body. A couple of times now, this is um, what I would consider a con, but uh, I have tried unscrewing it from the tail end and uh, the spring has gone kerflooey. So this one is actually uh, removing the head and the threading is going to be uh, backwards. So you're actually going to thread it on counterclockwise in order to get it to stay in place. Now, what you may have noticed, those keen observers out there, I'm sure you're uh, you're watching. There is an O-ring on the tail. Again, we're gonna go counterclockwise, as well as an O-ring on the front. Now, another thing to note is the threads on this guy is actually pretty squared off. It's almost more lands and grooves of a uh, rifling in a barrel. Uh, let's see, maybe right here you can tell we'll show a little bit of a difference there so it's actually squared off threading versus the typical um rather sharp uh groove so i believe that's going to aid in the waterproofing of this guy uh you'll notice really doesn't make any noise and i don't have to routinely clean those threads because i'm not cutting the um the threads on this guy every time I loosen it and tighten it, I believe that is because it is squared off. Uh, we do have O-rings on both ends of that. And when you go into the box, they give you a couple of accessories. They give you a um, <clears throat> advertisement, but uh, a strap that you can run through the hole right here, there we go. So you can run that through there. I would find that incredibly distracting and uh, snaggish. So that stays in the box, but they also give you two more O-rings. So over time, if these should fail or swell or get destroyed, get lost, whatever, um, they do provide you two O-rings already ready already in the box. Moving on to the instruction manual. Put this away real quick. I believe we're gonna get into some charts. So I'm gonna leave this here. If you would like to pause. I'm sure it's a very good read. In addition to the other side. For, um, those of you who uh, don't speak English. Uh, but we have a couple of parameters here and I'm gonna try and get this in here. So it is compatible with alkaline batteries, nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries, lithium ion 14500 batteries. And as I said in my testing so far, uh, use at your own um, discretion. The Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries so far have been working fantastically. But uh, it does say here that when you're using the rechargeable one, there is a red LED that will tell you that it is charging, it is receiving current and voltage and wattage and all. And then uh, it will indicate green when it is full charge. So you don't have to set a timer or a watch or anything like that. It does actively tell you in the battery that is built in. And I would assume that you can purchase these batteries separately if you so choose. But as we get in here, the lithium battery gives you up to 550 lumens for 35 seconds. And then it will step down to 330 lumens for one hour and one minute of runtime. 
At the medium setting, you're looking at 150 lumens for two and a half hours. And then the, uh, what I call moonlight setting is five lumens for 58 hours. Alkaline battery, you can uh, read the numbers there. We have a throw of up to 86 meters. We have um, six feet of waterproofness. I, I don't know, I would imagine typically there's a time limit on that. Um, and then uh, a drop from three feet. So pretty decent stats from what I've seen. I have not tested any of those, but um, let's go ahead and get into the user interface. Now, what I do like is it does have a memory and right now it's not gonna do anything, haha, -ha, because I remove the battery. Bear with me, we're gonna go ahead and put the lithium back in. So going back to the chart, wow. we can see that there are three settings. You have your high, your medium, and your low. And those will vary on the output and the duration based on the cell that you're using. So that's kind of handy too. If you know you're gonna be camping and you're gonna be camping at night or you're gonna be doing night walks or something like that, putting in a lithium battery or using the included lithium battery will probably give you the brightest uh, outputs for the longest period of time. So you can go ahead and swap that battery in. If you're just using it as uh, on the daily as a um, daily carry, you can go ahead and use the alkaline ones and you're getting pretty decent uh, brightnesses. I have found that the brightest setting is a little too bright. The medium setting is sometimes indistinguishable, honestly, from the highest setting. I think it throws further than it appears to be twice as bright. Uh, and then the midnight setting is borderline useless during the day. But when you turn it on, let's go ahead and get it to our midnight setting, moonlight setting. And we're putting out a very low beam. Click it again and it will turn it off. Click it again. It's substantially brighter. So go ahead and do this. Off and on is your highest. And then you're back to your lowest. So I do like that there's only three settings and I do like that it doesn't have this stupid strobe. A lot of flashlights seem to include that. I, for the life of me, have no idea why they would do that, why they include it. It's probably easier to just buy that chipset and install it than come up with your own. I find it pretty useless. If you've ever used it before or you have uses that um, you feel I should know about, leave that in the comments section below. I'd be interested to hear. Uh, for a survival situation at night when people are actively looking for you, I can see that being beneficial. Otherwise, I, I feel it's gimmicky. But uh, what I like is, again, it does have a memory. So we have low. If I turn it off, wait a couple seconds and turn it back on, it's going to go back to the low setting. I usually leave it on the medium. That gives me the ability to quickly put it to the highest output. But um, I find it actually carries quite far. Uh, so again, we just had daylight savings time. It gets pretty dark pretty early out here. Uh, we're up in Ohio. And um, on the highest setting, it probably carries, it's, it's hard to be objective with it because um, lighting something up, right? If light hits it, does that constitute how far it's gone versus being able to see the item? So the light not only hitting the item, but bouncing back for you to be able to see it. But my shooting range will be maybe 100 yards away, 120 yards away. And this guy, even on the medium setting, will light up the railroad ties to the point where I can see the individual railroad ties. So being something that's um, a rather small diameter, I believe I can cover the entire lens with a AA battery. It's very powerful. And again, you can select between three onboard settings as well as whichever battery type you're using will determine its output as well. I find it incredibly useful, incredibly handy. 
So let's go ahead and consider some pros and cons with this. The pro is I've heard about this on a couple different channels because, well, everybody is reviewing this guy, and for good reason. We have a five-year warranty. It runs on AA batteries. It's very small. It's very light. The quality of the aluminum, I feel, is um, quite good. There's no shaking. There's no wiggling. There's no uh, squeak to it. It seems very well built. Um, I cannot speak to drop testing or anything like that. Look around for those videos. I'm sure they exist. But the quality is absolutely there. Another selling point to me is the fact that I waited until Amazon was running a sale on it and I picked this guy up for about $16 on sale. They had a orange one, which honestly I wouldn't be opposed to. Uh, green is my favorite color, so I am at peace with that. But uh, the quality of the paint is actually pretty good as well. So we do have a little bit of scrapes and tears there. Recall that... I slide this on and off a couple times a week. Um, I have not dropped it, but uh, I had it in my mind that I could paint some glow-in-the-dark paint around the rim, so every time I turned it on, the paint would glow. That did not uh, turn out to be the case, and that's probably contributing a little bit to the uh, what we will call character of that. But when we go ahead and unscrew this... It looks like they went ahead and anodized the inside as well. So it's not just the um, green color, the anodization on the outside. It's also on the inside. I really like that. Uh, the quality seems to be absolutely there. I do like that it has the memory. I do like that it has a tail switch. I don't like the ones where the buttons are somewhere along the uh, perimeter of the guy. You have to make sure your orientation is correct and find the button and press it. But this one, I always know that it's always going to be at the tail always. I do like that. The one thing I don't like so far is there's really no half press. Um, you, It is there. It takes some tuning to get used to. You're pushing it maybe 80% close where um, you're very close to accidentally clicking it, in my findings. So I'm sure with time that will wear in. Uh, it's something that, especially since you have three settings to go through, if you could just half press it and get through them, that would be great. It's uh, a bit of a learning curve, I guess we'll say. It's not um, a binary on that. Additionally, the two original everyday carry flashlights that I had had a side emitter. So there were only two settings. One would be coming out the front and the other one would be lighting up the side. I really hope I find that flashlight. I'll try and do a video on that one. It is in my original how to get the most out of your everyday carry flashlight video. But it was incredibly handy being able to have this on your belt. Again, I carry it on my left side, so call it 10 o'clock. And I could angle that emitter to be pointing forward and just by bumping it even with the palm of my hand or my thumb or my pointer or whatever I'm carrying, just by bumping it, I could light up as a area light in front of me and be able to check the mail or not get hit by a car on the way to the park or something like that. Incredibly handy. This one doesn't have it, clearly, uh, but I feel like I'm mitigating that benefit by having this guy on there at least that will throw a little bit of light around me, in front of me, give me a little bit of uh, the area light. In addition to the fact that I carry the S11 flashlight on my keychain, and that does have the area floodlight, which would also be stored on a belt clip, so it can also be oriented in front of me. Other than that, um, I feel like it's light enough. It's a very small diameter. It's incredibly powerful for what it is. If you can wait for this guy to uh, go on sale, I would absolutely snap it up. And to that point, if you get it 20% off, go ahead and pick up two of them because um, it, it's a good thing I have the high visibility colors on this. My four-year-old son is absolutely enamored with this. Anytime he sees it on my uh, belt, he's reaching for it. He's trying to uh, steal it from me. He 
he's a big fan of a flashlight, especially in the evening when he can uh, use it as a lightsaber or blind the sister or whatever uh, concept goes through his mind. But um, they're very handy. They don't rely on proprietary charging sources. They don't rely on proprietary batteries, non-replaceable batteries. You can shove any AA battery you have into it and it will continue working. So this is Outside the Target Demographic. This is a review of the Ace Beam Pocket AA EDC flashlight. Hey, look, it's right there on the box, so you know it's good. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, feel free and leave them in the comments section below. I appreciate hearing from you guys, and I will catch you in the next video.